Welcome to the History of Fashion, uh, episode one, or episode like 1.1 if you want to include the history of tie-dye, but this is like the first real episode. All right, so today I'm going to be talking about flannel shirts. Uh, as you can see, I'm wearing a flannel shirt with a sweater. It's my outfit today. When we talk about flannel shirts today, we usually mean like a warm plaid button-up shirt. Uh, but in reality, flannel is just a type of fabric, as I'm sure many of you know. So to really explore the history of what we think of as a flannel shirt, we'll kind of need to investigate not only the fabric flannel, but also the origins of plaid as well. And once we do that, we can kind of take a look at when these two became almost synonymous in today's, uh, today's culture. So we're going to start by doing a brief overview of the fabric flannel. Flannel fabric is basically a soft twilled wool or worsted fabric with a loose texture and a slightly napped surface. Traditionally, flannel was made from wool. These days, it's often made of cotton or even cotton-like uh, cotton synthetic blends. And basically, it attempts to simulate the original woolen fabric's texture. All right, so flannel, or at least its press predecessor, um, originated in Wales, and it's been around since at least the 16th century. Um, it was well known by this time, so it could have been a bit earlier than that, um, but that's kind of like the first references we see to it. So over time, the fabric spread across Europe, uh, and it became affordable and commonplace by the 18th century. Um, since then, flannel has been a staple in Western clothing. Um, it's always been a comfortable, durable fabric, and it's lighter than regular wool, but it's still quite warm. So that's kind of why it's been as popular as, as it is. Well, flannel shirts we think of today kind of have their roots in workwear, uh, specifically like hunting and lumberjack. Lumbering? Lumberjacking. <laughs> flannel has been a commonly used fabric in the West for a long time. Uh, in doing research for this, I found basically people were wearing flannel everything. Like I was going to do this whole tangent about flannel undergarments because there was this whole period that uh, Europe went through where there was a large sect of people who believed that plant fibers were bad for you. So you could only wear animal fibers and then wool undergarments were a big thing, but then flannel was like a lighter version of that. It's pretty crazy. I would really recommend you check out some of the sources. Basically, all that to say, flannel is a very common fabric in the West. We've been using it for a long time since the 18th century. It's been common throughout Europe and then the Americas uh, by proxy just because of the European settlers that came over here. So that kind of wraps up the quick overview of flan uh, of the flannel fabric that I wanted to do. Uh, next, we're gonna talk about plaid, and this is where it gets really interesting because really when we talk about a flannel, we don't even necessarily mean like a flannel shirt. We, we mean a plaid shirt. So the definition of plaid, as most of us understand it, is a fabric with a pattern of tartan or imitation of tartan. Uh, however, the term was originally, and it still is sometimes used to refer to a rectangular length of tartan as part of the Scottish national costume. In traditional Scotland, uh, and maybe even Scotland to this day, they may think of a plaid as like, it's basically just like a long sort of shawl uh, that men and women would wear. I guess they wouldn't all wear it as a shawl, but you know what I mean, like a long rectangular piece of fabric with that uh, tartan plaid uh, pattern fucking plattern, I swear to God. <laughs> There's so many misnomers here, like we call this a flannel, but flannel is a fabric which is unrelated to plaid, which is actually just a length of fabric worn by Scottish people traditionally. And um, the pattern on it is a tartan pattern. The pattern we know as plaid, but is more accurately called tartan, uh, it's, it's thought to have Scottish origin. Uh, this is actually disputed by archaeological findings. In 1979, an archaeological dig in China at a place called uh, Kizilchaka revealed an extremely well-preserved tartan dating back to sometime between 1200 and 700 BCE. So this is thought to be an early tartan woven by the Celtic people. This dates back to long before anything that was found near Scotland. Uh, in fact, the earliest tartan found near Scotland only dates back to the 3rd century CE, and you can see it, it's not preserved nearly as well. <laughs> Despite that, tartans kind of play a huge role in Scottish culture and historical Scottish culture, and that's kind of where we see the pattern most throughout history. Uh, 
The problem with uh, fabric history is that it's really hard to preserve textiles because they, they're like organic material, so they kind of go away. So like, yes, we see these, these early examples of the tartan fabric, but it's really hard to get a very clear picture of the complete history. So we're gonna actually jump ahead to the year 1600 here, and tartans had basically become ingrained in Scot Scottish culture as something worn by people of all social classes at this time. So it's interesting to note that while common belief is that specific tartan patterns had long historical ties to specific Scottish clans or families, uh, there's no actual historical evidence that this was the case. In reality, region and personal preference kind of determined which patterns were worn by which people. Now, in the 18th century, uh, tartans became a symbol of political rebellion in Scotland, and it, they were eventually actually outlawed. So despite this, they found a home in Britain as a distinctive part of military uniforms. By the 19th century, Scotland had once again become known for their tartans, and that is still the case today. So there's actually one last important point on the history of uh, tartans or plaids, uh, it's actually about one pattern in particular, which is the Rob Roy tartan. Uh, it's commonly known as a buffalo plaid. That's the iconic red and black plaid. It's thought to have been brought to America, thereby forming the basis of the plaid shirt in the early to mid 19th century. So to sum up the last two kind of sections of this video, the Welsh kind of came up with this fabric um, flannel and it was brought through Europe and was widespread. Uh, by the 19th century. We also looked at the plaid pattern, which actually has like a deep Celtic origin, um, eventually made its way to Scotland and became a huge symbol of Scottish culture, uh, kind of went into Britain a bit and uh, by the 19th century made its way over to America. So this is where we get into modern flannel shirts. As previously alluded to, the classic red and black plaid shirt dates back to the mid 19th century. Um, these were worn by hunters and lumberjacks in America. So the pattern itself was brought over from Scotland. There's a bit of dispute on who actually kind of brought it to America. I don't necessarily know that that's important. It did definitely come from Scotland. And really the company who first started to popularize it and bring it to the mainstream was Woolrich. So they basically be began selling the red and black or buffalo plaid shirt sometime in the mid 1800s. I saw the year 1856 somewhere, but I wasn't uh, able to verify this from a super credible source, but it was definitely around that time. And they haven't stopped selling these to this day. You can still buy a Woolrich plaid shirt. So by the 1930s, other companies like Pendleton had hopped on the trend, and that name is gonna be important as we move throughout the 20th century. Plaid shirts became a staple in menswear at this point. And then in the 40s, um, they started being worn by women as well, particularly in the late 40s, we see some iconic images of Marilyn Monroe wearing a plaid shirt. In the early 50s, Pen Pendleton actually released uh, one of the first women's specific plaid shirts. In the late 50s and 60s, the trends showed no signs of slowing down and plaid shirts actually became a staple of surf culture. This was one of the facts of the fucking episode for me. I had no idea about this. But actually the Beach Boys original name was the Pendletons in reference to the Pendleton plaid shirts that were ubiquitous with the culture. So by this point, plaid shirts had become almost as much of a staple for both men and women as they are today. But uh, the key operative word there being almost. The grunge scene in the early 90s gave plaid shirts a new meaning. You know, this whole urban lumberjack style became a huge part of the culture with the top stars of the genre bringing the look to the mainstream. Today, pretty much everyone has a plaid shirt or two in their closets. Um, I certainly have a couple. <laughs> it's become such a universally loved item and we see it worn by people of all walks of life. This is gonna be a bit of a bold statement, but I would say plaid shirts have become almost as timeless as blue jeans. So thanks for watching this episode on the history of flannel shirts. Uh, such a cool item and the history was like a, a lot more all over the place than I expected. I mean, I did mostly talk about Europe here. I really do try and look at global um, influences on fashion, but from what I found, uh, this is mostly a European trend. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you would like to see next. Let me know what you uh, enjoyed and what you didn't. I'm always looking to improve here, especially since I'm just starting out. Definitely subscribe, like, share this video. I would really appreciate all three of those things if you have the time. And last but not least, my sources available right here uh, or in the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll be back next time with another history of fashion video. Bye everyone.